When you live on a boat, the ocean is literally your backyard, but with the minor difference that you always have to account for the weather. And while today was a perfect day to scout for lunch, we knew that by tomorrow it was all going to change. Empty! because we had a lightning hit right in front of the boat. Uh, okay, I'm gonna hide away. The wind's dying down now. Somebody was struggling, but nobody around. And I think it's okay now. Oh, oh, there's a big one coming. Whoa! We left Nassau this morning. We spent about a week there. So our plan now is to either head up to Stirrup Bay. So this is the most northern part of the Berry Islands or just keep on going through the night and arrive in Bimini tomorrow. I think in the past 48 hours, we had winds from all directions and we also have quite a few squalls passing through in the past few days we said well we had enough of Nassau we want to go go exploring now we have the drone so let's just untie the lines and just leave drinking water yeah, maybe we we'll just put a thousand liters of swamp water <laughs> yeah well it's i hope it's good enough it, to it, shower and yeah do the it, dishes it tastes weird it, it smells weird <laughs> the reason we are in bimini is because there's a secret we're not to reveal it yet well it's not a secret but we're not going to tell to them okay okay <laughs> and it has been all mysterious We picked out an anchorage over here. We thought it's protected, but we can see the catamarans just going like this. So the wind is coming from the island, yet the swell is coming from the other side. So it's very strange. I can see the waves crashing on the beach. It's going to be very difficult to land a dinghy. How is it that there I think is swell? It's swells? the jet skis. <laughs> <laughs> so is it the jet skis? Is it the boats? 
that are passing by. No, I think it, it, because it's not that big, Bimini. He wraps around and you get the constant Atlantic swells around. So. Yeah, it's a bit choppy here. But anyway, we're gonna find a place. We're gonna enjoy this place. To boogie. We go boogie. Yeah. We find a place where we can boogie. Yeah, we had somebody calling on the radio saying, "Hi, um, yeah, I'm just." inquiring how it is where you are because I'm just trying to find a place where I can drop the hook and quietly anchor but it's just the it's all over the place here the swells are coming from everywhere and it's like anchoring on the open ocean it's, it's just there's no way you find peace <laughs> even if we put a the anchor offset or a stern anchor the boat will just keep moving so we spent the whole day going up and down and trying to find somewhere where it's not super rolly so we can edit it makes it really really uncomfortable to be swinging so much guys we've been defeated we mean he defeated us we spent two days looking for a calm anchorage because there is a constant swell coming from the Florida Channel. We've been going up and down last yesterday for 20 miles and then we came back 20 miles to the exact same spot where we woke up. We basically couldn't stand it anymore. And today the weather is turning all the way from south hard to north within six hours so we don't really know what to do anymore we didn't really get any sleep we didn't get to edit we didn't get to do anything it's very difficult to rest like this hardly any of the marinas has a draft deep enough for us only one marina and they're completely full so yeah the only thing we can do is sail out because it's gonna blow from the north soon and here yeah it's coming in from southwest right now oh it's just okay. last night was a very tough night for us we could not find a protected anchorage and with waves over three meters and sudden gusts of up to 40 knots the weather left us with no choice but to sail out until conditions improved. But today is a brand new day. And even though the bad weather ripped our 20-year-old sails, we were determined to fix them and go on. Because we know that tomorrow the sun will shine again. did it we here we couldn't do zigzag though is when we started racing <laughs> and the machine just went berserk because we have to do it with a lot of speed my mom bought me the best sewing machine in the world it's 10 years old and without it we wouldn't have been able to make it this far <laughs> thank you so much i can't believe that we are fixing our sails with a conventional sewing machine. When everything falls into pieces And you have wasted every teardrop And it seems for no good reason Give me something to believe in I can't believe this is almost a hundred years old. It's still here because it's made of ferro cement and metal. <laughs> I can hear the echo of my voice <laughs> bouncing off of it. We're turning around now and we're gonna drop the hook and then back up, back to the wreck. a maneuver that you can't really do with a lot of time you have to do it quickly because the boat will be pushed by the wind away from the wreck so that's our intention obviously we do not want the boat to be in the wind towards the wreck 
but uh, yeah that gives us a really really tight time frame to do this kind of maneuver the stress is over now <laughs> finally managed to secure the boat we had to do the whole tying up maneuver one more time because there's absolutely no holding here we checked the anchor and it's just on its side but because it's very fair and we're not going to leave the boat alone I think it's going to be okay if you pass me another line I'll go and replace this mooring line that we have because this is a new mooring line and we don't want to destroy it there just gonna get another mooring line because we're using our nice black super long line that is now rubbing on the bow of the wreck because the current is pushing the boat sideways and if we leave it you wouldn't believe how fast it will wear through the line it's a few hours and it will already be completely destroyed the wind is actually coming from there but the tide is filling in so our mooring line is rubbing because it's tied up on the other side of the bow of the wreck. If we leave it in a couple of hours, it will be just completely rubbed through. Guys, this is one of the most impressive things we've ever seen. This is so big. I think somebody put a ladder in there so you can actually go up. Let's hope it's like somehow safe. Little hint, I'm afraid of heights. Oh my god. What's if a guy's plunged to the water? Well, I don't plunge to the water, plunge into the dinghy. Oh. In the name How of you do it? In the name of adventure. I'm, I'm frightened. <laughs> Wow. Look at that windlass. Uh, oh. <laughs> Look at all of Is the holes safe? on deck. Did it say? Uh, no, pull from the lines. Okay. Not from this, whatever this is. Wow. <laughs> I'm glad you don't look so much more courageous than I did. Man, honestly, this looks apocalyptic. You know, this was actually used as target practice. So they used to bombard this place here. This, this That's place. why there's so many holes. Yeah. The Americans used to use it as, um, yeah, like Sarah said, as for military uh, practices. Well, man, but at least if you fall, you just fall into the water. Yeah, where there's more metal elements sticking out. Don't fall on the inside. Oh, great. Look at the hole. Look how it's still all intact. You can actually see the rips of the ship still in. Look right here. It's not just only cement and iron. It still has wood. And the wood is actually in better shape than the iron. <laughs> Two nights ago, we had some thunderstorms passing through and we were talking about coming to the wreck already. And we even thought about maybe there's some protection around the wreck, but then we were thinking, just imagine, you're the only one anchored here. There's like lightning going around, the sound, and all you see is the skeleton of this ghost ship, like right there. And so, we said no. <laughs> no, <laughs> we're gonna come here during the day when the weather is really calm. Like that would be so creepy. So this is where the anchor chain sits. Imagine when I let the chain out, the anchor chain is going to go ta -ta 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 through these pipes. 
the sound, the noise that it must have been making. I mean, I can feel now how the waves are hitting the hall, and that's already. And there's so much echo. Yeah, so much echo. There's so much. I mean, in, in our boat, when we let the anchor chain out, I can hear it when I'm in the helm, <laughs> very loud. So imagine, this is a metal tube with an anchor chain. I don't know how many millimeters, but it's, that must be. The, the, probably the chain links are the, the thickness of my arm. So when they're anchoring, there's no sleeping. <laughs> Apparently we're in the certified seamen's toilet. <laughs> and Nick cannot help his curiosity. He wants to see the windlass, but the windlass is up here. So uh, he's gonna do the monkey thing. Look at the agility! <laughs> you can do it! Oh god, I'm about to go down. Yeah. I don't know. You haven't thought that through, have you? Oh, God. Okay. Wow, that's a big windlass, man. So these are the tubes where the anchor goes out. And then he goes through these leads here and into the gypsy of the windlass. The actual clips itself, they're still good. And underneath is just completely eroded. All the cement is gone. And so the iron now is broken as well. Oh. 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 I need to get the camera. <laughs> Only three quarters of the boat are intact. The rest was ripped off in the hurricane, and a part of the stern is actually just sticking out of the water. Oh, God. <laughs> and look where, oh look! This is still sturdy. It said that the boat was carrying rum at the time. <laughs> I of think a lot of boats are carrying rum here. Yeah. I wonder why they shipwrecked, they all got drunk. And yeah, it was passing by Bimini when it got caught in a hurricane in 1926. That's when it got pushed all the way here. So imagine you put a block of concrete in the water and it sinks. But this, due to the principle of Archimedes, it floats. Displacement. It's fantastic. I don't know what this is. It's like two big tanks here in the water. Oh wow. They look like boilers. Okay, man looks safe actually, but it's not safe anymore. Look at this. <laughs> That's a port light. Oh, we take that to Cuba? Yeah. <laughs> Our port lights are leaking. Guys, can you see this over there with the teeth? That's the quadrant of the boat. That's what actually moves the rudder of the boat. Now, to put it into perspective, ours is about that big. <laughs> <laughs> and this is several meters. It's actually partly submerged. So it's like a... Like a ours is with cable. This one is with like uh, gears. Yeah, but it's like a half moon shape, I guess. Like ours, no? I would say. And it goes like... Uh, uh. Yeah, exactly. It goes like this and moves the rudder of the boat. I like that move. What was it? <laughs> it moves like this. <laughs> it moves the rudder of the boat.